Registered Phenomena Code 848 Object Class Beta White Utility Hazard Types Ecological Hazard Grouped Hazard Organic Hazard Contact Hazard Destabilization Hazard Extradimensional Hazard Teleportation Hazard Containment Protocols OL Site-042 has been established surrounding RPC-848 for the purpose of observation and protection. In case of an attack on RPC-848 or a breach of OL Site-042, ASF units must terminate all hostiles. All Authority operatives who are stationed on other planes of existence must prioritize the defense of this universe's corresponding instance of RPC-848-1. Operatives stationed in other realities must always liaise with this reality, and must never attempt to make contact with an alternate reality authority counterpart. All on-site personnel must liaise with the gardeners of RPC-848 if they wish to traverse the anomaly. When traversing RPC-848, personnel may only make contact with the instance of RPC-848-1 or RPC-848-2 if under direct orders to travel the said instance's corresponding plane of existence. Unauthorized traversal of RPC-848 or handling of floral specimens will result in termination. Each RPC-848-1 and RPC-848-2 instance, from the instance's appearances as well as its corresponding plane of existence, are to be recorded and catalogued in document AR-114. Description. In this universe, RPC-848 is the designation for a plot of land located on the Norwegian-Swedish border in National Park, measuring approximately 5 hectares by 7 hectares. RPC-848 is distinguishable from the surrounding area, in that all plant species within it are non-native, from the grass to the instances of RPC-848-1 and RPC-848-2. Even the soil composition is different. RPC-848 has its own biosphere, and as such, it is completely independent of the surrounding land in terms of its ecosystem. RPC-848-1 instances are tree-like organisms, resembling members of the genus Fraxinus, which have been discovered to be a part of a clonal colony. A clonal colony is a group of genetically identical individuals, such as plants, fungi, or bacteria that have grown in a given location, which all share a singular root system. There are various other plant species within RPC-848, which have been broadly designated RPC-848-2, as they all share a common anomalous trait along with RPC-848-1. When direct contact is made with a specimen within RPC-848, they will be perceived as spheroidal constructs containing various galaxies, nebulae, and other celestial bodies. After contact with an instance is made, the subject will proceed to speak in an unidentifiable language, which has been determined to be most similar to… When subjects commence speaking this language, it has always been reported to have a tone and pacing akin to chanting. No individual has been able to remember what or if they said anything at all. As subjects chant, a spatial anomaly begins to form near the subject, after which they will be drawn into it. These space-time anomalies, when explored, will lead subjects to various alternate realities depending upon the instance of RPC-848-1. This only happens with RPC-848-1 instances. Realities accessed via RPC-848-1 have been confirmed as being true alternate realities, as testing with the Authority's own method or interdimensional travel will lead subjects to the same reality as accessed via an RPC-848-1 instance, through the matching of the reality signature. Instances of RPC-848-2, when their corresponding plane of existence is accessed, are known to be highly different from a typical alternate reality accessed via an instance of RPC-848-1. These planes of existence have generally been discovered to not be universes in the traditional sense and are instead classified as an unnatural, artificial, or other reality, acronymized to UAO. A partial catalog of UAO realities accessed via RPC-848-2 instances, as well as alternate realities encountered via RPC-848-1 instances, can be found in Addendum 848-1.
Several humanoids have been seen roaming seemingly at random throughout RPC-848. These beings will attest that they are the gardeners of RPC-848. This is unconfirmed, as they do not perform typical plant nursery maintenance. Instead, they have been documented uprooting several RPC-848-2 instances, as well as cases where RPC-848-1 instances, numbering from one to dozens of instances, were chopped down with all gardeners broadly claiming said instances to be invasive or unhealthy, without any elaboration. Further information on these gardeners can be found in Interview 848-1. Addendum 848-1 Catalog of Alternate-UAO Realities accessed via instances of RPC-848-1 and RPC-848-2 Below is a partial document of realities encountered through RPC-848. Full documentation of the catalog can be found in Document AR-114. RPC-848-1 Instance Designation Reality Description Notes RPC-848-1-1Q7-55J-11 This designation is also given to the corresponding alternate reality slash plane of existence. Reality determined to be similar to baseline, however, the RPC Authority appears to be a public sector organization. This Authority equivalent began operations during the Reformation, when their equivalent Octoritas Impertus became fully independent from the Catholic Church, expanding throughout Europe and eventually all over the world. This Authority equivalent fully embraces their role as a public sector organization, holding many charity events for help with funding for containment of anomalies as well as incorporating anomalous education into Common Core schooling. Let's never do this, Dr. Quincy. RPC-848-1-2D4-47K-01 Reality is at an Earth or an Earth-like planet with a multitude of moons in its orbit. Said moons cause severe tidal forces across the planet, which in turn cause gravity within tidal force affected areas to be highly variable. Life on the planet seems to have adapted in many ways to combat these tidal forces, with some becoming entirely dependent on them. Caution is advised when traversing this reality, as said tidal forces are great enough to tear objects apart. RPC-848-1-7Y4-13R-21 Reality is that of two Earth-like planets, which are twin planets, in that both are roughly equal in diameter orbit on the same plane about their star, and both have separate and equal opposing gravitational pulls. This causes objects from one particular planet to be completely insusceptible to the gravity of the other planet, always being affected by the gravity of the planet said object originated from. There appears to be life on both planets, however, there are two different populations of a homo sapiens-like species on either planet, with different physical characteristics in both populations. Research into the gravitational laws of this reality is still ongoing. RPC-848-2 Instance Designation Slash Description Reality Description Notes RPC-848-2-8I1-94A-14 Instance resembles a Dianthus caryophyllus carnation, light orange in coloration. Reality determined to have several more spatial dimensions than baseline reality. Said observation of this reality caused severe headaches, and was later determined that the geometry of objects within reality was cognitohazardous. Life was encountered within the reality, however, communication was non-feasible, as subjects claimed that entities also speak in more dimensions than can be naturally perceived. Reality is used for testing involving higher spatial dimensions. RPC-848-2-00Z0-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z-00Z
The nature of this reality has made measurements of its ACS level nearly impossible. Research into this void is ongoing. Within all planes of existence, as accessed by RPC-848-1 instances, there existed an iteration of RPC-848, also present with it, was an organization of the native residents of the plane of existence which cared for and maintained the iteration. In instances of RPC-848-2, however, this consistency is not present. Though many did have iterations of RPC-848, a few notable examples did not. It is unclear how the phenomena of RPC-848 begins in the first place. Interviewed, a member of the alleged gardeners of RPC-848 will henceforth be referred to as subject, as they refuse to give a name. The subject is noted as being male, white skin, platinum hair, and gray eyes. Several markings akin to tattoos are present across the body, all of which are depictions of various instances of RPC-848-1 and RPC-848-2. Interviewer, Dr. Quincy Forward Interview is noted as being the first contact with the supposed gardeners after sightings of them were reported by tourists of the park. The interview was initially conducted in Norwegian but developed into English as the subject displayed knowledge in the language. Begin log. Hello. How do? Translation. Hello. What is your name? Frohe. Mit navet ek in abiktin. Oren godedet. Vet du et du ekit tringer et snak norsk. Translation. Why hello? My name is not important. How do you do? You know you don't have to speak Norwegian? What? Um. Well, alright then. We have some questions. Tell me. What do you and the other persons we have observed here do? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? We're gardeners. We cultivate existence and display it proudly. What do you mean by existence? How can you ask such a question when you fully understand it? Are you not a display of the majesty of existence? Well, I guess. Yes, I do exist. But let's return to me asking the questions. What are the plant specimens that are present within the area of land that you garden? Are they organic? Is it really so hard to understand? Existence has displayed itself in its entirety to us, and we simply make sure that all of its splendor and grace shine through for all to see. Okay. Well, we have seen you weed out several flowers and even chop down some trees. We must ask. Why did you choose those particular specimens when you removed them? Well, it's simple. They were merely invasive. My brothers and sisters and I merely sought them out and removed them before they spread throughout existence. Forgive me for making assumptions, but I do not believe any plant specimens you removed were invasive. I mean, I'll admit a sunflower is certainly not native. It is not wise to question your mother's gardening methods, so why do you feel it is any wiser to question a stranger's? Well, you're no ordinary stranger. Oh, well you've caught me. To be truthful, some examples of existence become sickening, both to themselves and to existence as a whole. We cannot allow these examples to spread their sickness to others. It's only natural. I suppose. We'll come back to this subject. Now, do you know where these plants came from? When were they planted here? We do not know. Certainly before us. Certainly before the Earth. Perhaps even before the universe. That doesn't make a lot of sense now, does it? Well, this is going nowhere. Now, I understand you've got a lot of questions, and perhaps my answers will not satisfy you. But my task is to satisfy you. And seeing as how the only way you'll be satisfied is answers my brothers and sisters have deemed sufficient, we are at an impasse. I can, however, propose an alternative. Not an answer, but an agreement. My brothers and sisters have seen you before throughout existence. We have seen the triangle that signifies your presence. Have you now? I assume by you, you mean my organization? Yes, but I must say you are very curious. You're so fractured, so inconsistent. Throughout existence you are everywhere, but you do not take advantage of this. We would like to help you become whole throughout existence. How would you help? The only way we can. 
We'll allow you to have access to our garden, access to all of existence, so that you may be whole. Well now, this is quite a proposition, one that I am not able to make alone. I'll have to bring this up with my superiors. Very well, but if we do accept, we have rules, very strict rules at that. We may discuss those rules at a later date. For now, we will consider your offer. That is all for now. End log. Closing statement from Dr. Quincy. Personally, I do not believe we should accept. For one thing, we have our own method of alternate reality traversal, and their insistence on the secrecy of their gardening behavior is also worrisome. I hereby put forth the proposal to not make any agreements with these people until the reasoning behind their actions with destroying plant specimens is made plain. Dr. Quincy Dr. Quincy's insistence on pressuring the gardeners into revealing their knowledge of RPC-848 is noted as causing diplomatic strain between the Authority and the gardeners, as a breakdown of communication between the gardeners and the Authority would significantly jeopardize the continued study of the anomaly. Dr. Quincy will be reprimanded for his actions. Security Incident 848-1 Defection of Dr. Quincy to an Unknown Alternate Reality On October 12, 2000, Dr. Walter Quincy, senior researcher of RPC-848, broke into the army of OL Site-042, proceeded to enter RPC-848, and began to fire upon several gardeners. ASF units were alerted and began to search for Dr. Quincy. The gardeners claimed they last saw him making contact with an RPC-848-1 instance, but could not give a specific designation. After this point, several RPC-841-1 instances were destroyed, via detonation of an explosive device attached to the trunk. Dr. Quincy was reported as MIA, as no body was recovered during the incident and it is highly likely that he escaped into an alternate reality. Dr. Quincy has hereby been labeled a rogue authority element that must be captured by any means possible. A formal apology was delivered to the gardeners, and an offer was made to replant the instances of RPC-848-1 that were destroyed. They declined this offer, stating that in time a new instance will form in the exact spot where the previous one was. Know the truth. Protect your reality. I don't have much time in writing this. I'm about to commit high treason, but I have to tell the truth. I cannot let them get away with manipulating all of existence. I was always suspicious of these gardeners. They talk of plants as if they were existence, and they're not wrong. RPC-848 is practically just a multiverse scaled down, which is quite incredible, to say the least, though it begs a lot of questions. But here's where they really made me not trust them. They just wouldn't give up any information as to why they would destroy plants at any given moment. This was a cause for concern for me right away, but apparently not for my superiors, as they went right ahead and buddy-buddied with them on the basis of cost-effectiveness and whatnot. I wasn't going to let them think they could brush off questioning their motives, however, so I set forth an experiment. I made contact with a fellow researcher which specialized in dimensional travel. I won't name him for his protection that I instructed to send a probe to an alternate reality whose corresponding RPC-848-1 instance was recently chopped down. He agreed to this request, and the results he relayed to me were troubling, furthering my suspicion. He said that he could not access the reality, and that it wasn't the fault of the probe as it had passed its maintenance test. I decided to run another experiment to assemble a hypothesis that I was forming. I made contact with an operative stationed in another reality's iteration of RPC-848, and charged him with observing when the gardeners of that iteration chopped down or removed any plant specimens. I, of course, would be observing from this reality for when the same thing would happen. We communicated through my computer terminal, which had an interdimensional link to that reality. Not a few minutes after I had seen several gardeners remove various plants, the operative responded and said that a similar event had just unfolded in the reality he was stationed in. The most crucial part of this experiment was the specific instances of plants that were taken down. I had recorded one RPC-848-1 instance, as well as four RPC-848-2 instances. Two of them were roses, and the other two were poppies. To my shock, the operative reported each of those as well. 
I further charged my previously mentioned friend with sending a probe to the reality of the destroyed RPC-848-1 instance. He responded by saying that the probe also could not access that reality. The next revelation was not an experiment, but it did confirm everything I felt towards these people. I was at OL Site-042, trying to formulate my next move, watching when and how many plants were destroyed by the gardeners, when all of a sudden, the operative that I had previously charged with observing the gardeners in an alternate reality sent out several disturbing messages before stopping altogether. To my dismay, that reality's corresponding RPC-848-1 instance was chopped down moments ago. My contact also once again stated that a probe sent to the reality could not access it. Then those gardeners came and reported that the iteration of RPC-848 within that reality was attacked, and the operative was killed defending it. I don't know how they do it, but I do know these things. While they are trees, they don't grow back. No matter how many instances I saw failed, not one grew back. Also, all of a reality's corresponding iterations of a tree must be destroyed for the reality itself to be destroyed. And when it is destroyed, you'll know when it happens. I've got to go now. I'm going to enact a risky plan. I'm leaving for an alternate reality, where the inhabitants are significantly less socially developed, and no organization is formed to maintain the reality's iteration of RPC-848 all the while covering up my tracks as much as I can. I'm going to protect that iteration with my life. You may ask, why don't I just go to my superiors about this? They won't hear a word of it. They're too interested in the anomaly itself to see past its keepers. Please, whoever finds this kill more of those gardeners unless you want this to happen to you. Doc, something wrong. Most of the gardeners have killed themselves by exsanguination. I saw some of them talking with each other as others were doing it. Then they touched some trees and fled to another universe. Is this significant? Corporal Adams Doc, bad news. This reality's ACS level is decreasing out of nowhere. What should I do? Corporal Adams The stars. There's no more stars in the sky. Request evac. Coherency too low for me to perceive which tree is home. Corporal Adams Coherency low. Do not tone. AC Damples. All dark. Arts Hiri. T Rod. Know these signs. Don't let them cut down any more trees. Dr. Quincy. Document AR 114. Through the generosity of the keepers, or gardeners, of RPC 848, they have allowed the authority to catalog the various instances of RPC 848 1 and RPC-848-2 that are present throughout RPC-848. All catalog instances will have a plaque placed near them, designating them as well as the reality is accessed through them. The template for the plaque is as follows. Instance Designation State whether the instance is either a Dash-1 or a Dash-2, as well as its reality designation. Physical Description Describes the physical appearance of the instance. Only applies to RPC-848-2 instances, with certain exceptions. Reality Description A few short paragraphs describing the general appearance of the reality. Notes, if needed, researchers may write down other observations of the reality. Researchers must always check this document to ensure that no instance is being repeatedly designated, or to find newly discovered realities which may be of use by the authority. Instance Designation RPC-848-1-3Y6-49C-807 Reality Description Reality is that of the RCPA timeline, an alternate reality RPC authority analog which takes on a much more domineering role in the pursuit of containment of the anomalous. Notes, the RCPA does not appear to be aware of their iteration of RPC-848. As such, an operation is being undertaken to permanently conceal it from the RCPA. Instance Designation RPC-848-1-2F9-82W-1-2 Reality Description Reality is that of Earth, or an Earth-like planet that is part of a quaternary star system. It is unclear if this is a true quaternary system, as all stars are roughly 3 AUs apart. Nonetheless. Due to this quaternary system, 
the planet receives near constant sunlight on every part of its surface. This does not cause overheating, however, as the planet itself only comes within 3.2 AUs of its perihelion to the smallest star, with 4.6 AUs being its aphelion to the largest. Many lifeforms encountered on the planet have adapted to the always daytime nature of the planet, with most choosing to live in underground caverns and tunnels. Note, the various RPC-848-1 and-2 instances appear to be plant specimens native to the planet. RPC-848-1 resemble members of the Catasi family, while the various RPC-848-2 instances are comprised of plant specimens which are generally believed to be flower-like. Instance Designation RPC-848-1-683-19G-218 Reality Description Reality is that of a super-Earth-like planet, estimated to be 2.3 times the size of the baseline reality Earth, that is entirely covered in ocean, with no visible land in sight. Life on the planet is of course fully aquatic, and as such, most creatures are massive, some measuring up to 150 meters in length. Though most creatures behave similar to how most aquatic life does, there was one entity encountered that displayed sapience. This entity stood at over 300 meters, with a humanoid form, and a head that was described as fish-like. No other entity like it was encountered. The entity claimed that the personnel was trespassing on its domain, and offered to show them the way back. Personnel were led to the reality's iteration of RPC-848, and safely returned to baseline reality. The entity asked the personnel never to return. Note, the RPC-848-1 and-2 instances of this reality also appear to be native aquatic floral specimens, with RPC-848-1 resembling members of the order Laminarios, and RPC-848-2 resembling various types of coral. Instance Description RPC-848-2-0U4-22V-617 Physical Description Instance resembles a hibiscus syriacus, rose of Sharon, white in coloration. Reality Description When subjects first enter into this reality, they appear to be in a type of throne room, with various entities visible at various points within it. The first entity that is noticed appears to be the leader, or monarch of the court, described as a humanoid entity with a crown made of light. Several other entities stand beside it with their only physical description being that of Chimera. The monarch will proceed to communicate with subjects. The topic of conversation is usually that of the subject describing to the entity their life. After a certain point, the entity will bid the subject farewell, and the subject will return to baseline reality. Subjects will feel a sense of pride and a need for recognition of this entity for the remainder of their lives. Note, though there is certain similarities, it is unclear if this entity… Instance Designation RPC-848-2-7X7-51C-43 Physical Description Instance resembles a Euphorbia pulcherima poinsettia, red in coloration. Reality Description Subjects will first enter into a large carpeted room, with walls similar to that of marble and various pieces of furniture are visible in the surrounding area. Straight ahead is a type of fireplace, suspected to be natural. To the left of the large window, visible on the outside of it, there appears to be a spiral galaxy, estimated to be the same size as Andromeda. A humanoid entity can be seen sitting in a chair, facing the fireplace, with most of its body not visible to subjects. When subjects attempt to communicate with this entity, the entity will tell subjects to stop bothering them, and should only speak if they have received an invitation. Further communication will prompt the entity to direct them to the corner of the room, where an RPC-848-1 instance resides. If subjects attempt to approach the entity to view its face, they will find themselves thrown towards the RPC-848-1 instance by an unseen force, and sternly warned to leave immediately. Note, it is unclear if the room is its own reality or if it is merely a small part of a reality. Attempts to learn of and secure an invitation to speak with the entity further is ongoing. Instance Designation RPC-848-1-4Q1-AAL-84X 48 
Reality Description Reality is that of the Remnants timeline, an alternate reality authority counterpart that underwent a reality-wide event, known as the Alpha Trigger, that caused an uncontrollable expansion of anomalous phenomena, leading to the breakdown of chain of command and subsequent dissolution of that authority counterpart. Notes, instance of RPC-848 within the reality appears to have been completely destroyed by unknown means, though several people are noted to have escaped prior to its destruction. Research into its destruction is ongoing. Instance Designation RPC-848-1-6G7-54F-43 Reality Description Reality is Reality is determined to be similar to baseline. However, the anomalous in this reality is fully known and ingrained into society. Explorations into the history of AR-6G7-54F-435 revealed that the authority of this reality was unable to re-establish presence in America, crippling Authority-6G7-54F-435 and preventing them from relocating their anomalies and command structure in 1906. After the Union eliminated colonial presence of the Octoritas Imperatus during the American Revolution. As a result, the remaining Authority-6G7-54F-435 forces were overrun during World War I, as news of anomalous America spread worldwide, causing both the Allied and Axis powers to unite against Authority-6G7-54F-435, effectively destroying it. This also resulted in World War II never taking place, as well as various other changes that occurred as a result of this. Note, Given that this reality's inhabitants regard Authority 6G7-54F-435 the same way Nazis are regarded in our reality, it is imperative that they never learn of our reality. Instance Designation RPC-848-1-1S3-71A-69 Reality Description RPC-690A Gardeners in this reality regularly engage in fornication with the local fauna, visitors, and other gardeners. MST Zulu 2 Muzar, have been able to confirm that this is, indeed, the same alternate reality as that accessed by RPC-690. Notes, research into transportation potential is underway.